Uh, Mr. C had a bad night last night. I could not. I tried two hours. Two hours. I sat there going click, 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 and Target, Walmart, uh, Best Buy, GameStop, or at Amazon, we're all saying, "Get lost, get lost, get lost, get lost." Braden? I started six. I mean, I, I'll show you all my geeky uh, teacher gamer friends were all like, you know, just texting each other left and right, left and right, left and right. I actually got to, um, I got to Best Buy. I got to put it in the, um, I got to put it in the uh, box. And uh, I mean, this is the whole conversation. And we're all like, hey, look, I got it in my, my cart, you know, and I had it in my cart and it just would not, wouldn't check my, wouldn't take my credit card. And, you know, I kept clicking like, I want to pay for it right now. Take my money, Sony, take my money. <laughs> Are you gonna, are you I'm gonna go for the full thing just in case. I'm gonna get a digital. All right. How much does the PlayStation cost? The digital one is 400, and the uh, the disc one is 500. Oh jeez. All right. Enough geeking out. Let's do some math. The new VR stuff. Uh, VR makes me puke, so. Yeah. Have you seen the launch of these titles? That's like the new launch of these stuff. I've tried VR and I get about 10 minutes into it and I really feel nauseous and I'm like, okay, I, I gotta puke. And so I, I can't do it. Yeah. Ratchet and Clank is the one I wanna play and, um, oh, well, Assassin's Creed, obviously. Um, those are probably the two and then. Yeah, there's a couple other ones, but seen I've seen it. I'm not. I, I'll probably play, but it won't be like the first thing I buy. I want. All right. Uh, where did we leave off? So we left off with um, the fact that uh, this one has uh, let's see, two theorems and four corollaries. Two oh, theorems, four corollaries. So we're going to do a. Um, we'll pick up where we left off, but I do want to go backwards just a little bit. This one's a pretty important class, uh, so I'm going to go backwards just a little bit. Uh, and then that's not the right class. Not unless you want to be in seventh grade. All right. Sorry, e-learners. Let's give you the right one. Share screen. That's the one I want. Sure, I didn't show up before. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do two days of three point four. We took the quiz yesterday. You don't need to write down the homework unless you do. We weren't here yesterday. It's the same as what it was. Uh, a couple people tried to do their homework and they said, "Oh, I can do it without the rest of the the, the corollaries," but uh, that's good. Um, but for the rest of us, I said, hey, don't, don't even try your homework until I finish the class. So some of you might have a little bit of homework. Some of you have a lot of homework tonight. All right, so the, the, the section is entitled Angles of a Triangle. Now, I did not teach one, and it's a really important one as well, too. It's the second theorem. We kind of left off on the first theorem, and the, uh, we were into its corollaries. So we'll, we'll skip to that. So we talked about polygons. Those are closed plane figures made up of segments joined at their endpoints. And I showed you that if you don't join segments at your endpoints, you get a shape, but it's unrecognizable. If you do uh, have a shape where the segments are joined at their endpoints, you make recognizable shapes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then we said, okay, well, the first one, it's not like physically the smallest, but the one with the fewest number of sides is called a triangle. And a triangle is a three-sided polygon. Oh, by the way, poly means many God means angles, so it's many angles, okay? Um, yeah, and I said a triangle is named by, and Karis told us that it was named by, you pick any one of the vertices, those are the corners, those are the angles. Uh, vertex is singular, vertices is plural. You take any one of the corners, A, and you either go clockwise or you go counterclockwise, you gotta give me all the letters. You gotta stay on a black line too, so you can't go A, uh, C, and then, well, 
triangles are bad representations. If we had a, which you don't know yet, but if we had a rectangle, right? You can't go A, B, and then to D. You have to stay on a black line. Either go clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay. All right. So uh, triangles. And we do have a symbol for triangle. We don't have a symbol for all the polygons, but we do have one for a triangle. So from now on, in the proof, or you're writing statements, you're talking about a triangle. You put the triangle symbol. You put the three letters. Okay. All right. Uh, we talked about classifying triangles two ways: one by its side measurements and one by its angle measurements. Connor, by side measurements, give me all three. See, all of a sudden it just took one day and you guys remember this stuff. But when I asked you yesterday, we were all lost on this one, right? Uh, remember the tick marks are what indicate whether it's isosceles or equilateral. Equilateral means all the sides. Equa, equal, lateral sides, equal sides. Uh, I'm not a Latin or Greek. I don't remember where isosceles comes from. I should. I'm a teacher, math teacher. I should know that. And we classify them by angle measurements. There's four of these. There's acute, there's obtuse, there's right, and there's equiangular, equal angles. Okay? Uh, if it is a right triangle, it's not necessary that they put the little red square right there, but 99.9% you know, .9 of the time it will be there. Uh, there might be, and then when it's not there and it is a right triangle, they're trying to trick you. They go, oh, yeah, but look, it's really 90 degrees. They're literally trying to trick you. Uh, I, 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 and there's only maybe once or twice in the book they try to do that. All the other times they'll have a little uh, right triangle. Secondly, I want to make a quick note here. Notice the words here all tell you exactly what the triangle is. If the words were not there, you could say nothing about these first two triangles on the left. Nothing other than they're a triangle. Even though this uh, second one from the left is clearly obtuse, you can't say it's obtuse unless they tell you it's obtuse or you prove it's obtuse. The only ones up here that you can say something about if the words were not here is the right triangle because it's got a little square or the equal angular because it's got the little congruency marks. You're like, that seems stupid. I can clearly see that the, the second one from the left is obtuse and the first one from the left is, is acute. This is one of those geometry things that we, uh, we stick to truth. And the picture is not truth unless it's labeled or it's stated, hey, it's an acute triangle or it's obtuse. Uh, this is kind of more of a chapter one, two, three thing. By the, you know, by Christmas time, you want to be thinking about that. Oh, it's not listed on the diagram. I can't conclude that uh, this angle here on the second one from the left is obtuse. Uh, and then we came into the first uh, theorem. And the first theorem, was we were required to make an auxiliary line in order to do the proof itself. Uh, an auxiliary line, could, it could be an auxiliary ray, it could be an auxiliary point, it could be an auxiliary flower, uh, smiley face, any of that stuff. You're allowed to put anything you want on your diagram if it helps you and that is uh, logically true, right? For instance, um, you can't uh, uh, say that, you, um, I'm trying to think of a very good example of something you would not be allowed to do with, with an auxiliary. Uh, you can't make a conclusion with an auxiliary, meaning that you can't immediately conclude a proof by saying, hey, I put, a, I put the, a dot of knowledge right there and this knowledge proves it, that sort of thing. But uh, you can certainly draw lines and points and rays there. Uh, and then the proof, well, basically, I'm not gonna go over the proof one more time, but we drew an auxiliary line. This auxiliary line allowed us to set up some alternate interior angles. We also introduced this idea of labeling. We labeled angles four and angle five to make our life easier. Uh, and then we carried out the proof. And the proof was basically to prove that the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And it was a pretty simple proof. You guys figured it out. Uh, a little bit of help for me after I drew the auxiliary line. Uh, the th key takeaways from here are, well, one, that you can draw an auxiliary line. Two, that you can label uh, at will. Uh, and then three, let's see, the logic of the proof was we set up something that's equal to 180. We set up congruency statements, but in order to do a substitution, we have to have like things. If it says this is congruent to this or this is congruent to that, you can do a substitution. But if it says this is congruent to that and the measure of this equals, you have to change one. If you want to do a substitution, you have to have like things. Equals with equals, congruency symbols with congruency statements. 
So this definition of congruency right here was the, the kind of, uh, I don't know, a, a little cheesy step to, to add in there in order to make that last statement. So this is kind of where we left off. We started talking about uh, the corollaries to this theorem. The so theorem 311, which is basically the sum of the interior angles of any triangle, at least any triangle in this book. I mentioned that because, uh, oh, by the way, I'll go off on a tangent right here. Um, you are on the earth, right? Somewhere on the equator, right? You're standing on the equator, right? And you face due north. And you walk to the top of the earth. Where are you at? You're at the North Pole, yes? What is the angle that you just made between you and the equator? If you go and turn due north from the equator, what's the angle? It's got to be nine degrees, right? Okay. Walk uh, a couple hundred miles around the equator and then stop. Turn due north and walk to the North Pole. What's that angle got to be? What's the problem with that triangle I just drew? What's the problem with that triangle I just drew? How many right angles does this triangle have? You told me that was right, and you told me that was right. So how many right angles does that triangle have? It has two right angles. That is a problem. This is a problem that early navigators in boats figured out that, wait a minute, the geometry that the Greeks came up with doesn't work on the earth. The paradox is geometry is measuring the earth. That's what geometry literally means. So early navigators found, wait a minute, if you point in this direction, you sail for a, a long distance, that the geometry doesn't work. And guess what the problem really is? No. What am I drawing my geometry on? Mm -hmm. I'm drawing it on a plane, hence why it's called planar geometry. And the geometry on the Earth is on a, it's on a sphere. So it turns out that geometry that you're learning right now in high school does not, well, much of it, does not work on the Earth. It works in small distances or anything drawn on a flat plane. But if you switch to, this is literally called spherical geometry, a lot of things change. Hey, guess what a line is on the Earth? It's a circle. Start on the equator and keep walking in a straight line. Guess what happens? You make a So what are lines in spherical geometry? It's a different geometry. If that interests you in college, you can take a course on spherical geometry. And that is how we actually navigate with airplanes and boats in the real world. We don't use the geometry that I'm teaching you. We, you, you have to use a different type of geometry called spherical geometry. Okay. Why are we learning this? Uh, do you want to learn two different types of geometry? Oh, by the way, the, the, what I teach you works great in small shapes. Like, hey, I got to, I got to build a building. Uh, uh, planar geometry works great for that. If you're talking about literally getting in an airplane and wanting to go from Colorado Springs to New York City, and you literally try to do planar geometry on a map, you wind up in the wrong spot. Because our geometry, plane geometry, doesn't work on a curved surface. All right. So back to ours. So we know that, at least for this year in plane geometry, that, uh, yeah, the sum of the interior angles of a uh, triangle add up to 180 degrees. Uh, and then we talked about corollaries. And I started off by saying this. You got a tree and you got leaves that are on the tree. The theorem is the tree, the corollaries are the leaves. So the leaves are attached to the tree until it's fall, right? Um, but the leaves are attached to the tree, the corollaries are attached to a theorem. And what we say is that these corollaries come directly from that one theorem. Uh, today we're going to get four of them. I forget which one we left off on. But this was the first one. I know we at least got through this one. This is what it says, and it's not earth-shattering thing. It says that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of the second one, what can we say about the third ones? They're congruent. Is everyone paying attention? Danny, I'm not sure what you're doing. Okay, so that's what we proved. 
Uh, and that was corollary one to theorem three eleven. That's I think we stopped. Did we get to the second one? I don't remember. We got the third one. We got the third one. Okay. So the, a corollary one to theorem THM abbreviation of theorem. Uh, the three eleven says that if two uh, angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second, then the third ones are the same. They're congruent. Okay. That was corollary one. Uh, corollary two is a really easy one. It says if you have an equal angular triangle, I think Wes was the one that proved this. Uh, if you have an equal angle triangle, then all the angles are, interior angles are 60 degrees, six zero degrees. Pretty easy one, right? If all three add up to 180 and all three are the same, 180 divided by three is 60. There's your proof. So the last one is the one that we left off on. Did we actually prove this one or did we stop here? Okay, so let's prove this one. So what do we got here? We have an obtuse triangle. We have a on a right triangle. What are these angles? On a right triangle, what are these angles? I don't mean like oh, it's thirty-two and forty-six or something. What are these two angles? They're acute, and we can further say that they're equal to. They're equal to the sum of them are equal to 90 degrees. Why? Because the other one is 90. Well, how many degrees does that leave us with? If it's a right triangle, how many how many degrees are we left with for these two angles? If this is 90, how many are we left with? So therefore, those two are complementary. So in a triangle, uh, if you did not write this down yesterday, you got to now. You can have at most one right triangle. At most. Why? Because there's only 180 degrees. A well, 180 minus 90 is 90. There's, there's, there can't be a second 90 because then there's no room for a third angle. 90 plus 90 is 180. Well, that would mean that if, if you make a second 90 degree angle, you have nothing left over for your third one. Now remember, that's plane geometry. I just showed you before about true for spherical geometry. That same logic applies to obtuse triangles. If this is bigger than 90, then you have less than 90 left to make the other two two angles, sorry. Therefore, you can only have one obtuse angle. So in a triangle, there can be at most one right or one obtuse angle. That's all it says. But remember, the proof of this comes directly from theorem 311, that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle 180. Cool? Uh, we don't use this one that much. All right, last one. So this is that idea of uh, the previous statement is, if you have a right triangle, what's x plus y? If you have a right triangle, what's x plus y? Uh, three times three times, they're complementary. They're, they're right? So in some cases, they will be the same if they're both 45, 45. Uh, but in general, we just say that the x plus y, are, they're complementary. That means that they add up to 90 degrees. If you've got a right triangle, then the other two angles are complementary. We use this a lot. And this is corollary 4 to 311, where it comes right from 311. Some of the interior angles add up to 180. So if you've got a right triangle, then, well, you only got 90 degrees left, so the other two must be complementary. Questions? Uh, Amaya and uh, Chandler, have I been talking too fast? Okay. Done? I do have, uh, everyone else, I do have your quizzes graded. They're on a grade book. And as soon as Bailey takes her, I'll hand them back. But if you're curious what you got, I can tell you. Or you can check, I uh, want to say Infinite Campus. You can check Power School. We good? All right. Uh, okay. So uh, here's a shape. Um, I don't know, hourglass looking thing, right? Two triangles that look like they come together. Notice we got this big X right here in the middle. Okay. So it says, is angle P congruent to angle V? Well, I mean, visually, they, it's kind of hard to see. No, they're not asking you to pull out a protractor. They're asking you to somehow figure out, use some logic, to figure out if P and V are the, exactly the same thing. 
Chandler, look at the shape and tell me anything that you know. Which ones? E and R? Yeah, because you see the little, the little arc right here, that means they're congruent. Okay. Bailey, look at the, the shape and tell me anything else that you can get from the shape. He said that R is congruent to E. Agreed. Where are you getting that from? Say again? You said P is congruent to V because they cross. What do you mean? No, no, I'll keep with that thought. You're almost there. Why did you say cross? Do you see a cross? Do you see an X? Okay, is that with P and V or is that with something else? I'm with you. I see an X as well, too. But P and V don't make the X. What? Not P and V. What makes the X? Well, P and E don't make an X. P and E make a line. Do you see the X? Yes. Touch the X portion of the X. What are you touching? Here's the X. Touch the X. What part are you touching? I'm going to claim you're not touching P or E. Touch the intersection of the X. What are you touching now? If I ask you to touch where the two lines cross, where would you be touching? The middle. So what do you see at the middle? What else? Literally, just with your eyeballs, just look right there at the intersection. Tell me what you see. That's labeled. So what can you tell me about one and two? Okay, when in the past have I talked about an X? And I have talked about an X. When in the past have I talked about an X? Vertical angles. What do you know about vertical angles, Bailey? The what? I don't know. They're congruent, right? Vertical angles, right? Remember we said opposite angles, right? Formed by an X are the same. Vertical angles are the same. There's four of these angles, right? But only two of them are congruent. This one and this one, and say something. No, I meant words to describe what the, the rest of the sentence would be. So clearly, the dot here and the dot here are congruent. What else is congruent? Yeah, I was hoping you were saying left or right or something like that. Sides are fine. Okay, now look back at the picture. Tell me what you can do. Chandler said R and E are congruent. Why? Because the little red marks that say they're congruent. What else, uh, Bailey? What you had just said. Angle one and angle two are congruent. Okay. You're scaring me, right? You're scaring me. That one was an obvious one. All right, one and two are congruent. One and two are congruent. Anybody else that lost? All right? Could everyone look at the picture and tell me that one was congruent to two? The, the thing about, and this, is, by the way, is a proof. We're just doesn't say proof. The thing about the proof is you're going to get stuck like her plenty of times. What you have to do is be able to look at a diagram and simply pull from it any bit of information that's up there. As I look at the picture, I don't know. He hasn't told us what that shape is. Well, then that's not part of it. I do see, you know, if you had said, hey, I see two triangles, I'm with you. Okay, there are two triangles. But I would think that you guys could see the red portions of it. Hint, 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 the red portions are generally, they're trying to tell you something. So Chris, where are we at? What are the two things that we know now? And the second part? What Chandler said. Okay, so one and two are done. What else can you look at the picture and tell me? That's what Chandler said, okay? We got those two things. So I'm gonna say R is congruent to E. Why? Because it's indicated. And I'm going to say that uh, one is more two y vertical angles. Okay, how can I prove that p is more to v? Well, if that every <laughs> one is only one and two, then 
hour in here if you're in one and two or three or three turn off and turn on. And it's got to be the same, right? He proved it a different way. You got your books open or not? You got your book of truth open? I think Madison is touching it with her finger, right? Take either your book of truth or your book and flip over to the corollaries. You just showed me that two angles of one triangle, R and E, and one and two are congruent. What can you tell me about the third? What? Why? Because that's what corollary one says to theorem 311. Corollary one to 311 says, if two angles of one triangle, these two and these two, and I should say more appropriately, two pairs of angles of one triangle are congruent to two pairs to another, then the third ones have to be congruent. What Wes said was a pretty darn good way. He was going to prove the whole thing without even using 311. And that would have worked as well, too. All right, enough of that. We got one more theorem left, right? It's a big one. It's a big one. All right. Now you got to really pay attention. This is uh, not too confusing, but can be slightly confusing. So I would expect eyeballs on the board. All right. So what do we got there? Somebody? We got a triangle. All right. I'm going to make an auxiliary line. I'm going to choose one of the vertices and make an auxiliary line. Uh, that's angle one. That's angle two, and that's angle three. We call those three angles, somebody give them up with a name. What are we going to call those angles? What? No. A bit more descriptive. Where are those angles? Okay, so we call them vertice angles, maybe. Where are the angles in relationship to the triangle? So what are we going to call them? Both of these two said, let's call them on the inside or interior. That's the name that they chose. So we're going to call the angles on the inside of a triangle the interior angles. Everybody good with that? All right. Well, if you have interior angles, clearly there must be. So here's how you draw exterior angles to any polygon. You take any one of the segments and you extend it. You ready? I'm going to extend one of them. I could have extended this one. I could have extended that one. Do you see the angle? That is what we're going to define as an exterior. I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it, well, I'm at number four. So four is going to be called a exterior angle. Okay? One is going to be called interior angle. And you're like, well, then so are two and three. Now I'm going to, you know, change things up. Because of how I drew it, Four is next to one, but two and three are not next to one, or ne not next to four, yes? Did I say that right? Four is next to one, but four is not next to two and three. So two and three are interior angles, but we're gonna give them an extra name for this diagram and this diagram only. We're gonna call two and three the angles that are far away from four that are interior, except they're not gonna say far away, they're gonna call them, anybody? We're going to call them remote. That's what it means, though. It means the two angles that are not immediately next to the given exterior angle. You need to write this down, box set, or in your notes somewhere. The two angles, once you determine the exterior angle, the two angles that are far, far away are called the remote interior angle. They're still interior angles. But the remote, the one that's right next to it, we just call it an interior angle. We okay? Easy, hard? This is going to be really important. You've got to be able to visually identify the two remote interior angles and the exterior angle. Really important. Uh, remember, I could have made any one of the sides to make the exterior angle. So I will show you the other two. Okay, you ready? So watch. Okay, instead of using the top, I'll use one of the sides. See what I did? That makes this one the, there's your exterior angle there. The one next to it is called the interior angle. That makes the other two the remote interior. Notice they're not the same as the previous one. It's the same concept, but the numbers are different. 
All right, we saw the top, we see this one, let's see that one. I extend it, that makes this one the, that makes this one the, and that makes these two. You got the concept? All right, that's the concept. This is an easy, easy, easy thing to do if you have the concept. If you don't have this concept, you'll understand what you need to do and you'll mess it up because you'll use the wrong angles. All right, let's see what the concept is. It's a proof. Here we go. So I took that first line and I made an exterior angle here. What are the uh, two remote interior angles there? One and two are the two remote interior angles. We're going to say something about the relationship between the exterior angle and the remote interior angles. Ready? All right, here we go. The given is, once again, it's just a triangle. We don't get much from that. It's a we don't know if it's obtuse, it's right, scaling, isosceles, equilateral, equal angle. We don't know. Somehow, look up here, make sure you're with me. I'm supposed to show that the exterior angle is equal to the sum, that's what it says, the sum of the remote interior angles. Thank you. Man, how are we going to do that? All right, Madison, what's your thought? Oh, uh, we're on vomit on the page stage right now. Bailey and Maya, come on, stay with me. We're on vomit on the page stage, which is, this is the thing we were, I was doing with Bailey. I was like, look at the picture. Tell me anything you got. Amaya, you're up. Look at the picture. Tell me anything that's true. Okay, we got an exterior angle. That is something that's true. Okay, I'm going to say, okay, great, but tell me some more. I need you to look at the picture and tell me anything you can tell me. One or two remote exteriors. It's a great and a true statement. It gets us nowhere. Okay. But it's true, and she's doing a master or two. Tell me anything true. Can you look at it and tell me anything else you see? Raise your hands if someone sees something. So we got one, two, three, four, five out of the whole class. All right, you guys put your hands down. I need to help everyone else. If you're doing poorly in geometry, this is where it comes in right now. Like right now. My goal is to the people that the people that have their hands up can already do this. If you didn't have your hand up there, just admit to yourself, right? You can't do this and you need some help. Let me give you some help. Okay. There are, there are only a few handful of things that we've done so far, maybe four of them. Uh, the Bailey thing, the vertical angles, right? Do you see any vertical angles there? Okay, so maybe we make a list, and I'm not like literally, I want you to write this down. I'm saying let's make a list of things that we possibly could say. Do you see any vertical angles? No vertical angles. Do you see anything that makes a straight line? Oh, I got some head shaking now. Do you see anything that makes a straight line? Bailey, what angles make a straight line? What's a straight line? Okay, do you see any angles that if you added together, they would make a straight line? Okay, so there's problem number one. I can identify vertical angles, but I can't identify straight lines. If this is your thing, then stay with me. I'm gonna draw it for you right now. We're gonna fix this right now. You see that? Straight line, yes? You see that? I just broke the, ang the straight line up into two angles. These two angles added together make a straight line. Can you see vertical angles? No. Can you see a straight line, two angles that make a straight line on the picture? Yes or no? Okay. Connor, where are those angles? Uh, let's use numbers. Three and four make a straight line. Can you see that? I don't know if it's going to get us. Well, actually, I do, but I don't know if vertical angles are straight lines, but those are like two of the main four things we can now do. We can identify X's, we can identify straight lines. Okay? So we could say that three plus four equals. We could say that. All right. I said there was four of them uh, X's, straight lines. The next one is do you see anything? Do you see a triangle anywhere up there? What do we know about triangles? 
What's the main thing now that we know about triangles? Ignore the corollaries. What's the main thing we know? I don't need the people that had their hands raised. I need the people that are lost. Karis, what do we know about triangles? And they add up to 180. So Chris, you didn't have your hand raised. I got a triangle. What can we say? Using what Karis just told us. Which ones? Three plus four is not a triangle. One, two, three add up to the 180. Okay. There's three of the four things that you should be able to say on any picture. Hey, just look at the picture. The fourth one is anything that has a tick mark or curves says that those two things are congruent. You should be able to do those four things. Hey, identify vertical angles, identify straight lines, tell me that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle of 180, and look at the picture and tell me anything that's in red, it won't always be red though, that has a tick mark or curve. Does that sound crazy or is that something you could do for the eight people that didn't have their hand raised when I said, tell me something about the picture? And you guys are like, I don't know anything. <clears throat> We're gonna get through geometry if you, if you work with me. We're not going to get through geometry if you turn your brain off. You're like, I don't know. I'm done with this class. Oh, by the way, if you fail geometry, guess what? You're going to summer school. That's not a good technique. Stay with me. You can get a C in this class. All right. So those two statements. Uh, we saw a straight line. Uh, Connor said 3 plus 4 is 180. And Chris said 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 180. Let's say that. Boom. Fifth one and a proof. If you ever see two things that are equal to each other, what can you immediately do? Set them equal to each other. It's substitution. Can you see that? Hey, they're both equal to 180. Maybe they're equal to 100. Maybe they're equal to two, but they're both equal to each other. Hey, equal 180, equal 180. I don't know if this is, well, I do, but I don't know if it's going to work, but trust me, it's probably always going to work. When two things are equal to each other, set them equal to each other and see what happens. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set them equal to each other. Why? That's just a substitution. As soon as you set two things equal to each other, now look carefully at the equation. Look at it. Do you see anything the same on both sides? Madison, what do you see? Do you see anything the same on both sides of the equation? What do you see? Measure angle three is on both sides. So Danny, if I got the same thing on both sides, what could I do? Okay, if you see the same thing on both sides of the equation, what could you do? I could always subtract. Let's subtract three from both sides. What are you left with? Oh, I'm left with what I was trying to prove and you're done. Okay, you just solved it. What did we just solve? What did we just prove? What was the given? It was a triangle. A triangle that has a remote angle. I'm sorry, a triangle that has an exterior angle and two remote angles. We just proved that the exterior angle is equal to the two remote angles added together. That is theorem 312. Write that down, please. If you have a triangle, then the remote angle, I said it incorrectly again, then the exterior angle, in this case four, is equal to the two remote angles added together. Oops, sorry. Now, I only showed you one of the exterior angles, four. But remember, there's bunches of them. I could draw this like this, and now this is four. In this case, four is still equal to one, but so, hey, look, they're vertical. That's why that's true, by the way. But remember that remote thing can happen, or the exterior angle can happen on any one of the three vertices. Yeah, it would be. There's, there's a picture of the book that, that literally just said what I just said. 
It shows all three exterior angles. Okay, I said in this class you can get a C if you can do the skills. This is a skill. We've learned two skills in this section. We've learned that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle are, I can make plenty of problems with that. I give you two of the angles, you've got to figure out the third. Is that a skill you could do? That's also a skill that I never practice because I think it's an obvious one. If I give you two of the angles, could you always find the third one? Right? Sure you could, Chandler. This is the skill that needs some practice. So this is the one I'm going to choose to concentrate on. All right. So here's an example. Bailey, you see the triangle? Okay. How many angles do you now know inside the triangle? According to the diagram, how many angles do you know right now? I know one. Uh, there's a question mark. They could equally put an X there, right? In this case, they put a question. They're asking you to find out how big is that angle right there. Okay? So if you're given two of the three, you can always add and subtract for 180. Yes? That would be skill number one. How many angles are we given inside the triangle? One, right? Just 84. So it must be skill number two. Skill number two is the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote angles. It's a little bit of a skill, but let me see if I can walk you through it. You see the 107? Does it look like an interior or exterior angle? Can everyone see that it's an exterior angle? Okay. We know from theorem 312 that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote angles. Well, the two remote angles are, well, unknown and 84. So we could get an equation from that, couldn't we? Am I? What would that equation be? Stay with me. How many angles are we given inside the triangle? One. One. So we have two skills. One, if I give you two of the angles, you can find the third just by adding, subtracting 180, right? The second skill is the exterior angle theorem. Exterior angle says the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote angles. Uh, which one are the two remote angles to that exterior angle? Clearly 84 is one, what's the other one? The unknown one, okay, so what's the equation? This is, this is the part where you gotta, you gotta be able to perform. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote angles. What does sum mean? It means addition. It means add the two remote angles. Perfect. And that's going to equal not 180. It's going to equal to the exterior angle. So 107 is the exterior angle, and it's equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Some of you might need pen, color, or something. I'm going to circle the exterior angle. That means the two remote would be this one and this one. Okay? All right, could we solve that one of mine? Easily, hard, what? It's pretty easy, right? All we need to do is what? Add? What are we gonna add to both sides? Where's the variable, left or right side? Okay, on the right side, is it by itself or does it have something attached to it? What's attached? How's 84 attached to X? We get rid of addition by addition? What do we get rid of addition by? Let's subtract both sides by, and you would get your answer, which is 23 degrees. Yes? All right, we better do another one, because we clearly don't have that. See this picture? A little bit easier. Hey, if you have two angles, could you ever figure out the third angle of a triangle? All right, does the question ask us how big this angle is? No, it asks us the exterior angle. But if the question mark was here, that would be pretty easy. This is theorem 311, or 310, sorry. Uh, that this, no, I was right, it's 311. Uh, this plus this, subtract from what you would equal to this. But this time it's asking us to find the what? Interior or exterior angle? Trying to find the exterior angle. 
So we're back to 312. 312 says the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote uh, interior angles. Wes, what's the equation? Uh, 80 plus 70 equals x. Equals x. Right? Yes? Hey, Mr. C, I'm completely and totally lost right now. Be brave and admit it, or we're moving on. Mr. C, I am very bored right now because I got this after the first example, right? This is the issue of teaching a group of kids geometry. And so you're going to get a couple kids that, okay, I got it, right? And I still guarantee right now I got some kids sitting here like, I have no idea what's going on. Danny. What does theorem 312 say? It says that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of these two, yes? Did I not write that right here? So could you solve that? Yeah, that one's an easy one, right? Done. Mr. C, I'm still lost. Or no, I've got this. Why are you making a big deal of this? Why? Because this is too easy to do. This is easy. We can do this. If you're lost on this, right, when I walk into the room during student advisement in like four hours from now, don't sit there and chit chat with your friends. Come to me and say, I am truly and totally lost. I need your help. I am not going to pass geometry. Maybe I'm making too big of a deal of this, am I? Okay. Uh-oh, now we crank up the difficulty. What's different with this one? It's got a bunch of variables. Notice it doesn't say find out what the angle is. It just simply says solve for x. Don't panic. It's the same problem. Just more algebraically challenging. It's the same problem. Connor, is this interior or exterior? So the exterior angle is equal to what? The two added together. Can you see the two? All right, so what should I write for the equation this time? Equals. Equals what? What's the exterior angle? You got it, buddy. Good job. Okay, that's your first step is being able to write the equation. Who could not do that? No one is going to admit that they can't do it. I'm assuming that we're good and we're moving. Uh, is this easy, medium, or hard right here? Uh, maybe medium, right? It's an algebra problem. Okay, uh, combine like terms. Is anything to combine on the left side? Anything to combine on the right side? About 85 and minus 6, that would give me? Okay. Uh-oh, I already wrote the answer. Uh, animation out of order. Hey, whenever you get everything simplified, you move x's. Which one are we moving, 8x or 3x? So move the 3x to the other side and you get, move the 19, and that's why x is 12. Okay. If you're paying attention, you're being a good student. If you're not paying attention, that's why you're lost. Stay with me. I will walk you through this as carefully as I can. But I also need you to stop me if you're lost. One more maybe? It says solve for x. Hey, Chris, is this interior or exterior? Okay, we know that the exterior angle is equal to the... Okay, so these two added together. Can you write the equation for me? Yeah, no, I mean, just tell me what to write. You just said it perfectly, by the way. Keep talking. Perfect. So 130 equals this one plus this one. Yes? It's just an algebra problem. Now. It's a solve for x. It doesn't say how big is the angle. All right, solve for x. Group, what do we get? Group, what do we get? Move it. And it turns out that what? Nine, eight, nine, nine. There we go. This question can be asked one other way. I'm going to go back real quick and we'll stop here. The question can be asked for this remote interior angles, right? It'll give you sp specifically, it will give you actual angle measurements or it'll give you algebra, solve for X, or 
it'll combine the two. It'll say, okay, let me catch up. Okay, how big is angle C? But it will give you an algebra problem. So the first step is to solve for X, and your last step is to plug it back in. Good job. All right, here we go. What do you got, Jenna? What's the equation? Perfectly done. Perfectly done. Hey, when you get to student advisement, you're like, man, he made a big deal about that. He hurt my feelings, and now I'm mad. I don't want to learn German, uh, German <laughs> geometry. Ask your buddy. You got plenty of kids in here that, that got this, and they got this after the first example. If I'm not good enough to teach this to you, then ask for help from your partner. Right? No, I'm not mad at anybody in here. Um, I'm trying to help you. Okay. Uh, could you solve this? All right, I'll solve it for you real quick. We get to seven. What do we do with the seven? We're trying to find C, so we go over to C, we plug it in. What do we get? What do we get? Which is? And what would that be in? 35 what? Degrees. And we're doing a measurement. Hey, we're supposed to wait two minutes to leave, so we got to wait two minutes. Oh, I did the wrong, I did the wrong answer. 35. Questions on anything we did today? All right. Enjoy your homework. It is an enjoyable thing. You're definitely right. Like you said, the first couple of weeks of you it. And, and that was literally what I did, which was the first first couple of weeks, I was like, I'm not going to make it. And then all of a sudden, it starts to click. And they're like, okay, this is this is easy. And I never had to do any studying after that. I just had to listen to the teacher and just see what they said. And you'll have a fun time this year.